Hi, I'm Jeff Gerard with the Concrete Countertop Institute and I'd like to talk about surface preparation for your concrete before applying Omega Sealer. Preparing your surface properly is really important and it's essential to achieving good surface bond. The number one reason why most people have problems, especially adhesion failure, is because they don't prepare the surface properly. So what I want to do is show you the right way and the wrong way. These are going to include wet processing techniques and dry techniques. Now those of you who have read the instructions and really taken the time to understand them, recognize that nowhere in the instructions is dry processing mentioned or allowed. All the techniques, whether it's acid etching or hand sanding or diamond honing, are all done wet and there's a good reason for that and I'm going to show you exactly why. Alright, so let's talk about the concrete I'm going to be showing you. This is 40 old concrete. It happens to be Buddy Rhodes ECC, cast at about a half an inch thick, at a water cement ratio 0.28. Uh, it's got a little color in it, just to show the effects of the surface. It was left in the mold for two days, and now it's on day four. Right now what you're seeing is the ass cast surface against melamine. The melamine was completely bare, no form release on it, just completely bare melamine. So this surface as it is, is not ready for the sealer. It has to be cleaned. There's residue on it, there's dust of course. And we have to work on the surface to eliminate things like these curing lines, which happen in the mold. So the easiest way to do that is with 400 grit wet dry sandpaper, it's the black stuff. A uh, little bit of water, hand sanding, and I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So the easiest way to wet sand without making a huge mess is just have a spray bottle with water, some sandpaper, and a rigid or semi-rigid backer pad. I'm using the back side of a diamond hand pad. I never put the diamonds face down so they won't scratch the surface. And I'm simply going to wrap the wet dry sandpaper around this and use it as a sanding block. A little water on there. You get the idea. So if you want to keep a cream finish, this is a good way to prepare the surface and keep the sur same look. You're not getting rid of the cream surface, all you're doing is cleaning the surface, you're removing the surface texture of the melamine and any residue, if there's wax or anything like that, that might have transferred to the concrete, that's coming off too. So you can see there's a little bit of slurry coming off, a little bit of cuttings. I'm going to use the same diamond hand pad to clean it off. So this surface right here is much better prepared than this surface, which is right out of the mold. Yet, once that dries, it will look very, very similar. In fact, this will look more even uh, because it won't have any of this polymer haze or any kind of residue on the surface. It's all been cleaned off. It's still a cream finish. So let's say you wanted to be more aggressive and actually take the cream off and expose some of the sand. but you don't want to make a huge mess. For instance, you're inside somebody's house and you can't use a wet polisher because that would just make a huge mess with all the water. You can do this. Take one of my wet diamond polishing pads. This is a 200 grit. You could use anybody's pads, but these are going to work really well. And instead of putting this on a wet polisher, which is going to sling water everywhere, you put it on a sander. Now this happens to be an air sander because I'm in my shop, but you could easily use an electric sander. So here's the diamond polishing disc on a sander. I'm going to spray the surface with water and use the sander as normal. Now this method 
is a whole lot less aggressive than with a wet polisher because the disc is not spinning at two or 3,000 RPM. It's oscillating in a random orbit fashion, so it's not nearly as aggressive. But that doesn't mean it doesn't work on the surface. So I'm going to clean this up and we can take a look at it. So I've wiped it down, and this area was wet sanded with the 400 grit wet dry sandpaper. And this area here was worked on with the disc. I'm going to let these dry and you can see the surface. It's a whole lot smoother in, to the touch than this because there's melamine texture here and it's gone. Here's a close-up of the surface. So the surface is clean and dry. I wiped it down with some acetone to remove any moisture effects. This area was with the 400 grit wet dry sandpaper, sanded wet. This is the 200 grit diamond pad, sanded wet on an air sander. And this is the untouched melamine textured concrete. Because using a sander, whether it's an air sander or an electric sander with diamond polishing pads, because it's such a, a gentle process, it's very, very non-aggressive, you can actually be a little bit more aggressive and move up to a 100 grit diamond pad. So I tried that in this section here. This is the untouched surface. You can barely tell, but this is the 100 grit wet honed, wet sanded if you will. This is 200. Now you will notice there's a slight sheen from the 200 and the sheen is a lot lower with the 100. And there's this sheen of the, the ASCAS. So it's very, very similar. And tactically, this has more grip than this. This is a little bit smoother. This is the 400 grit wet dry side. So it's, it's the dullest. So if you want to play it safe, do this or do that. It's the 100. You're not going to expose sand. Now this is very hard concrete. If your concrete's really young, you may want to stick to the 200 and not be so aggressive to expose um, sand grades and take away your cream. So a really hard surface is going to um, polish up a little bit better. You can afford to be a little bit more aggressive. So my recommendation is if you want to keep a cream finish and you don't want to do acid etching, you either do wet 400 grit wet dry sandpaper by hand, two or better 100 wet with a sander, electric or air, but always wet. <laughs>